Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. welcome back, and if you haven't noticed, the meta in the Crucible has changed this season. Lots of players are playing lanes with scout rifles. They're doing that to obtain the season's ritual kinetic 260 RPM scout rifle, Randy's throwing knife. I've seen a lot of new faces here, and I thank you for giving my channel a chance. Reviews are one of my favorite things to do. I give them a full look, and hopefully you can take something from them. In this review, I have mouse and keyboard, PC gameplay, PC controller, console gameplay, all of it. Take a real in-depth look. Talk about the ins and outs, if it's worth the grind or not. I did the quest just like you. It took me a little bit. I don't take accounts. And I've been working with it for quite some time, and I feel like I have a good grip on what this scout brings to the table. This is the first kinetic 260 RPM that we've seen, and it's the first non-vice 260 RPM that we've seen. And I would like to see that theme going forward, like have a Haka or Hake Fusion, a Vice Shotgun. Keep making these retro weapons special by doing things from weapon vendors that you haven't seen before. This quest is a fairly long grind. It's almost in that Redrix territory as far as time. Now, I want to spend a small section here and talk about that. You pick it up from Shax. There are three challenges to meet, and they can all be done at the same time or separate. The first wants you to get Scout Rifle Final Blows, rumored to be around 450 of them. The second is to reach 2100 Glory and Comp, and the third is Enemies Defeated and Medals. For the Scout choice, just use what you're comfortable with. There's no wrong pick, it could be a Jade, Mida, Polaris, No Feelings with Box Breathing, Black Scorpion. You will be playing the Scout playstyle, you need Final Blows. Fortunately, Momentum Control is out there, and High Impact Scouts like Jade and Polaris do one shot. That is guaranteeing you Final Blows counting towards completion. The second challenge, oddly enough, the 2100 rank reached may be the quickest part of the quest. Even when you win or you lose, you gain 100 points or so, you lose 10 points when you lose, you climb. Don't stress yourself out. This could be the final part of the quest for a lot of you. And 100%, if you play solo, play the freelance playlist. I've seen some accounts get to 2100 in 8 total games. So just do your best, don't get discouraged. They changed how the scoring works, you can do it. The last part is defeating enemies and medals. I found that some medals didn't work. It's more along the lines of weapon medals, double kill, triple kill. Also for your special weapons, and honestly the easiest of them is Cold Fusion, which is defeat two enemies with a fusion rifle in a single life. Mission Control, defeat two enemies with a sniper rifle headshot at a long range in a single life. And then Close Encounters, defeat two opponents at close range with a shotgun without switching weapons or reloading. Note that the only part that you actually need a scout rifle for is the scout final blow part. The 450 headshots, you can use whatever you want in comp, you can use whatever you want to defeat enemies and gain medals. It is encouraged to use a scout going for medals, so you're doing multiple steps at once. Once completed, Shax gives you Randy's throwing knife. These 260 RP PM scouts are full auto, have deeper ammo reserves, and a fast reload when the weapon is empty. Randy's has a curated roll, locked in perks. For the stats section here, these are with all the perks added, including the range masterwork and fluted barrel. The roll has a range of 40, stability of 50, handling of 42, reload of 17, and aim assist stat of 63. Fluted barrel, great increase to handling, slight increase to stability. Extended mag, greatly increases the mag size. The magazine is at 19, and I will talk about this later, but that mag of 19 and a fast reload when that mag is empty empty from the frame, it allows you to keep pre-firing, to keep the pressure on your opponent. Multiple times I've done this, it's something that you can and should do with it. Onto its perks, we have Rapid Hit. Rapid Precision Hits temporarily increase stability and reload speed. This perk right here is elite on any weapon. It's a mixture of Zen Moment and Outlaw in a single perk. The best part is that you don't need a final blow, it procs off of hit. So any weapon in the game, top tier perk, it's always at the top. And we'll stop for a moment, now's a really good time to talk about recoil direction. It has a base stat of 59, and that tends to pull up to the top right. On console, Console, it's more exaggerated. There's lots of pop in the recoil. When you place on a counterbalance mod, it starts going to the left a little bit, but the first three or four shots are cleaned up. That's what's important because as you start landing shots, rapid hit stability perk starts coming into play. So for console, I do recommend a counterbalance mod, if not a targeting adjuster, but that counterbalance mod making those first shots clean is key when you start getting a gunfight going. With mouse and keyboard on PC, it has the same trait of moving up to the top right, but not as bad with mouse and keyboard. With a counterbalance mod, it does clean up those first shots, and then it slowly starts pulling to the left, but you don't really need it. I'm just going to keep this going in a loop in the background. I do have on the counterbalance mod, because I was testing it in PvE, but regardless, once you start hitting shots with rapid hit, it doesn't really move crazy with mouse and keyboard. And as far as feel, it gives a very satisfying experience, no recoil. At the end of the magazine, you have a very fast reload, and if you're hitting the same target, a super fast reload. It's top tier. Really fun experience. Now on controller, on console, the most important thing is getting the first shot straight in 
cleaned up. That way, when Rapid Hit starts working, it starts to level everything out and shoots really nice in a gunfight. Console's recoil does rise as you hold down full auto, so remember to apply a little bit of down tension to keep it level in a gunfight. If you don't, the combination of recoil rise and the flinch applied from incoming fire will get you thrown off. So as you land shots, Rapid Hit starts helping, getting you more in control, so apply that down tension to keep it level. The second biggest thing with Rapid Hit is going to be the reload. Since the curated roll has an extended mag, that greatly reduces the reload. The stat's down to 17. Rapid Hit stacks to a times 5 and the better the stack, the faster the reload. At a times 5 stack, it's over 150% faster for your reload. And even a one time stack really helps out since the stat's so low at 17. Moving on to Snapshot, Snapshot is great, but on this scout with this perk set, Rapid Hit is the better option. And it's a good move on Bungie's part to have fluted as the barrel to help the handling, to help that aim down sight speed. But for you to help that stat, honestly, the base handling isn't that bad. Snapshot will be the best, but you can get a little extra help with precision targeting or scout targeting on your helmet. It won't be anywhere near Snapshot, but at least you can kind of have best of both worlds and get that aim down sight speed a little bit faster. The second perk node has two options as well. Zen Moment, the stability is increased after each hit. It caps out at 66% after five hits. That 66% is based off of the base stability bar, and in Randy's case, the stat is 45. Zen Moment does stack with Rabbit Hit, and Zen Moment gives you the most percentage, the best stability buff out of these two. And it's worth noting that on console, only console, these two work really, really well together. And from what I've seen, it kind of gets into that mouse and keyboard type stability if you get Rapid Hit and Zen Moment going together. For a pure duel on console, this is the best option to pair Zen Moment with Rapid Hit, but since Kill Clip is there as the other option, that's going to take the top spot. Especially since you're pairing Rapid Hit with Kill Clip, a perfect perk combination. With Kill Clip, reloading after a kill grants bonus damage for a short time. Always a stellar perk for both PvE and PvP, you get 33.3% .3 more damage when the perk is active. Moving on into PvE, I have a small section here. Randy's Throwing Knife has a couple things going for it and going against it. With its perk set, I honestly think it's one of the best feeling weapons in Destiny 2. I really do. And I think that some of you that have it could agree on that. Getting really stable as you're landing shots. Since you're landing shots, it has a fast reload with rapid hit. If you get a kill while that's going on, that extremely fast reload, transition to more damage with Kill Clip. It's an all-around great experience, but it's a scout. And if Oxygen isn't cutting it, then you know something's up. Now, Scouts did get some help, but Bungie has a decision to make. Most, and even higher tier content, you can be right up in your enemy's face. Recluse, Hand Cannons, and Hand Cannons have been a top choice in PvE for a long time because they do good damage, they can one-shot lower tier adds, but Scouts can take a couple shots. And say if they could one-shot, let's say, an Acolyte, that kind of starts taking away from a Hand Cannon and puts it in a tough spot. Then you move back a little bit into medium to long range, that's where the Pulses live. They run that area with ease, so then you have to step back even more into safety, the Scout range. It's good there, but for most activities, you don't need to be that far back. For general play, like I said, it's a good experience with its perks energy. Vex Offensive, running around doing the altar on the moon, strikes. You can throw something like Chromatic Fire on a Warlock. You can place a minor spec on Randy's. It feels really smooth and accurate. It can do well. We never really know what could happen to weapons. At some point, they could get a really good buff, and this scout class could get a good buff as well. The artifact could grant special rounds, like the overload rounds. And this is a scout that would do well with them. It's something to keep in the back of your mind if you're on the fence about going for Randy's Throwing Knife. For PvP, I'm just going to show the testing for resilience levels. A lot's changed, so on the right side of the screen, I have the TTK values for the bullet time to kill. 5 shot, 4 shot, 3 shot, and it's easier to show it that way. At base, it's a 5 shot kill, 3 head shot, 2 body shots, that's a 0.93 time to kill. You can hit that 3 head, 2 body at 6 resilience and below if your enemy is 7 resilience or higher. You need to land 4 head shots and then a body shot. As far as base, you can also 4 head shot a guardian that is 1 resilience or less, that's rare. With Kill Clip active, you can 4 shot, and that's where that 0.69 TTK comes in. That 4 shot is 3 crit and 1 body. It can also 3 shot with Kill Clip on a Guardian that's 1 resilience or less, and that's that super fast 0.46 TTK. In PvP, this is a fun weapon, just like in PvE. Very satisfying shooting experience. It has a relaxed TTK similar to Bygones and 390s. With that 0.93, it's 3 head, 2 body, range is going to be your friend, it is a scout rifle. And that 0.93 isn't too bad when you start taking into account the distance that you're going to be at for a scout rifle, and all the little things within a gunfight. You're going to be applying flinch to them, everyone's going to be moving, it has a very high rate of fire, you can just hold down the trigger. And since it does have a really good rate of fire, that really helps out when you get flinch because you get right back on your target and start landing your shots again. And in the scout's case, it has rapid hit to help even more. I don't believe that it's anywhere near a top option in the Crucible. It's not. It's not a comp weapon, nothing like that. And just like before in PvE, and as I stated in a previous video, that when a weapon fits this mold, it's given the stamp, it's great for general play. I have been having 
having a blast with it in 6v6 quick play. And even Iron Banner at times. If you're high light and you get Kill Clip going, it can 3 tap a lot of lower resilience guardians. And since there's a lot of scouts right now because everyone's going for Randy's throwing knife, it's the perfect time to use it and have fun with it. It really is. Lots are using scouts, playing that scout play style. With Randy's, you could be fairly aggressive with it when you start having Kill Clip. Not as aggressive if you have something like Mida, but you can go on the hunt with it. Its true potential is when it does have Kill Clip active, and that's due to the TTK shift. Getting that 3 headshot, 1 body shot for a .69, getting that going. Some weapons with Kill Clip don't have a TTK shift like a 140 or 150 hand cannon. It just allows you to hit the TTK easier, but not actually change it. And that's really the best part of Randy's throwing knife. Being in Kill Clip, that feeling of the fast reload with rapid hit, super stable, then that transition to more damage. It's single fire. It's very, very fun. It's not a world beater, but it holds its own. Try to clean up enemies that are low health. If you see a teammate shooting, try to get in there and get that final blow. That way you can start working with Kill Clip. And lastly, an important thing, something to consider, something to try if you want to. Since this is relaxed, and that's important that it's relaxed, it's also full auto. Don't be afraid to throw in a crouch in your strafe. Nothing crazy, just a crouch or two. If they're aiming high and you duck below it, that does wonders for something that has a 0.93 relaxed time to kill. Because when you do crouch and your reticle goes low, and if it hits the body, that's okay. Because the body shot is a part of the 5 shot TTK, the 3 head 2 body, so you can do that. If you had something like a 140 RPM hand cannon, 150 you can't. So that's just something to keep in mind and try. In conclusion, as far as if it's worth it or not, to grind it out and do it, if you dislike scout rifles, then no, obviously. If you run top tier PvP loadouts, every single game, including quick play, like Not Forgotten and so on, then this is gonna let you down. You're not gonna have a good time with it. But if you try new things, then absolutely go for it. If you tend to get into more longer range engagements in the Crucible, then yes, absolutely. Now, if you're solely a PvE player looking at this scout, if you do use scouts in PvE, then yes, get it. If you kinda use different things, I would say that it is worth it as a change up weapon. And the main thing to really consider is the possibility of scouts getting artifact mods next season. So I believe Randy's throwing knife is a fun weapon. It's great for general play. It's something I plan to throw into my rotation as the seasons go on. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. I recently hit a huge milestone of 100,000 subscribers, and that's entirely because of you. I have a 100,000 video lined up, and in that video, I have a lot to talk about, and I hope you get a chance to catch it. It means the world to me. But for now, what do you think about Randy's throwing knife? How was the quest for you? Let's talk about it in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.